Saanich Historical Artifacts Society in central Saanich is a popular place for people to visit and learn about old machinery. However, on the fourth weekend of every June, the site is transformed for a different use. For the past few years, the site has played host to the annual communications exercise known as Field Day. Field Day is one of the best known amateur radio contests in which participants are tasked with setting up a temporary radio station and requested to make contacts with other similar stations all across North America. Points are awarded for each station contacted. In addition to providing a friendly competition, the exercise simulates the kind of conditions that operators would be faced with in the event of a major disaster or emergency. Stations are not allowed to erect any permanent structures and are forbidden from using grid power. Batteries, solar cells, or portable generators must be used to provide power for the radios. All the setup, even the soldering, must be done on site. One of the biggest hurdles to overcome is how to set up antennas. While some clubs have opted to erect portable towers and used beam antennas to feed the radios, Victoria, BC's West Coast Amateur Radio Association has opted for a slightly different approach. Long wire antennas fed over the tops of trees. If we stay right over here, it's going to count... The setup generally goes like this. Jens, an arborist from Duncan and newly licensed amateur radio operator, uses his slingshot to fire weighted ropes over trees. The ropes are then used to hoist the long wire antennas high into the air. The results have been surprisingly good over the years. In previous years, the club has set up multiple radio stations and antennas, but the motto this year has been a less is more approach. This year, the club opted to set up two separate HF stations. The first behind me is a CW or Morse code station connected to a long wire loop antenna, while the second station is a single sideband voice station connected to an inverted L antenna. There are two main advantages to only having the two stations. One is the reduced setup time, and the other is that two stations in a confined space generate a lot less interference to each other than the three or four stations set up in previous years. The crew this year worked quickly and setup was completed by around 11.30, just in time for a pizza lunch before going on the air. Jim Chu, one of the field day organizers, also took that moment to present the annual field day award, this year handed in a moment that was completely unscripted to yours truly. Uh, last year it went to Len. It was 15 when he got his license. This year it's the same situation. The person was 15. But he wasn't very good at talking. So he took a special course. He became a page down at the uh, legislature for a couple of years. That's where he got his shovel. <laughs> <laughs> The Field Day Award has been presented to deserving members of the local radio community for the past several years, and was created to honor the memory of Al Robson, VE7 Whiskey Uniform. After lunch, it was time to get on the air and start making some contacts. With two separate stations logging contacts, the obvious problem that could arise is the potential of duplicates. Fortunately, this is solved using 21st century technology, wireless mesh networking. The radio stations are each outfitted with a logging computer, both of which are synchronized together over a Wi-Fi mesh. Thus, any contacts logged at one station are immediately transferred to the other one, so everybody knows right away if the station they're working is a duplicate. And as the weekend drew to a close, it became clear that the two separate stations were the correct recipe for success. There were 509 contacts logged on CW or Morse code and 185 contacts logged on voice, making 2016 a record-breaking year for the West Coast Amateur Radio Association. The planning is already in the works for Field Day 2017. For INET, this is Christopher, reporting.